What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On September 9th, 2017, Christine revealed on Facebook a new drawing of her girlfriend, Jessica Quinn, writing that she had turned out to be the woman initially named Lovely Weather, Chris's destined girlfriend as depicted in Sonichu issue 10, noting the similarities in their drawn appearances. The next day, Chris went to Twitter to compliment My Little Pony voice actress Andrea Libman on her cute performance style after seeing the latest episode of the cartoon series. Jessica saw the tweet, which was also shared on Chris's Facebook profile, showing her surprise at Chris's comments. Chris apologized, stating that she only wanted to let Andrea know that she liked the way she said her lines and meant for the comment to stay on Twitter. Jessica wrote that it was odd how Chris wanted to tell the voice actress that she liked the sound of her voice when Jessica was waiting for Christine to get back to talking to her. Quinn then reminded her that Chris allegedly belonged to her accompanying her message with a selfie of threatening aura. Chris afterwards publicly acknowledged that she belonged to Jessica and was not interested at all at pursuing anything more than platonic communications with artists which she liked. On September 11th, Christine wrote an email to controversial illusionist and self-proclaimed psychic Yuri Geller asking for his advice regarding psychic powers. Hello Yuri, guessing you might predict my email to you colon close parentheses. Anyhow, I am Miss Christine Chandler in Rockersville, Virginia, USA. I just read your name in the Psychokinesis chapter of my copy of Develop Your Psychic Skills. I have been working on my own psychic skills. I have found I do have some, and I practice most daily. I am so close to making the trading card I have been practicing with, or even my pen, levitate. If I can, I would like to seek a more expert psychic skill training. I'm a still getting out there artist and creator. Anyhow, should you help me get further on with my skills, or guide me well, I would be most grateful. Thank you. Have a great and safe day. Sent from my iPhone. Stay safe. Christine W. Chandler Geller soon responded. Hi Christine, I don't teach one-on-one -on -one or give lessons. Most of my books are free to read on my website. Quite frankly, I believe you are wasting your time. There are more productive things in life than levitating a pen. Put your energy into those. Being a motivator, a positive thinker, helping others, a bit of meditation, some spirituality, empowering others, etc, etc, etc. Much energy and love, Yuri. Sent from my iPhone. The next day, Christine responded with another email. I am not wasting my time. I have my psychic friend, Magichan Sonichu, and my own dimensional psychic links to my Quickville and beyond. I have had a lot of deja vu moments in my life. I am not just looking for mere levitation, but I intend to do a lot more good with my psychic powers to bring peace and take down up to all of the internet haters and bullies. I need to do all these in my own control. And I did also ask for recommendations of anyone else who could help me better develop my powers. Your frank response left me feeling disappointed and disgusted with you right now. Until the later time when I recover from this feeling, because I have a lot of other stresses in my life. Ugh. Good day, Yuri. Sent from my iPhone. Stay safe, Christine W. Chandler. On September 12th, Christine went to Twitter to post a seductive photo of Jessica, possibly sent to her privately, proclaiming that she was a real person and that they had future plans in the making. The next day, it became public knowledge that Chris was listening to The Lazy Cast, a podcast featuring Planet Dolan creator Doopy Doover and her boyfriend. On the 14th, Chris changed the payment method for her supporters on Patreon to upfront charging to prevent patrons from joining and then leaving before they were due for payment. Members of the QB Farms noticed that Chris's announcement post was near directly copied from a Patreon post written by creator Kip Tay Tay, who specialized in illustrating chubby anime girls. On September 16th, Chris showcased an updated full body drawing of lovely weather, modeled after Jessica promising to feature her in future Sonichu issues. On that same day, Christine attended the Charlottesville Pride Festival, 
later having a picture featuring her in the background printed in the Daily Progress newspaper, wearing her oft-seen headgear of pony ears and unicorn horn. Apart from having a few photos of her taken, little is known of her activity at the event. On September 17th, Christine posted on Facebook a new drawing depicting her girlfriend, Jessica Quinn, in pony form, christening her character Diamond Melody. Soon after, she posted another illustration of Diamond and Chris's pony character, Nightstar, together, revealing that they are canonically a couple, or shipped. Jessica herself commended Chris's drawing efforts in the reply section. Two days later, Chris angrily demanded on Twitter for trolls to stop bothering her Jessica, sharing the video regarding their relationship, which she had made over a week prior. This was soon followed by two brief posts shared both on Twitter and Facebook, the first of which proclaiming that not all trolls were bad, and then the declaration that she thought kiwis were tasty. Members of the kiwi farms felt that her recent posts were prompted by a troll, likely Jessica Quinn. On September 21st, Christine shared on Twitter her tips for growing larger breasts naturally by eating 12 prunes per day and glazing all non-sweet foods with soy sauce. Followers of Chris felt that this ploy of Chris gaining weight and retaining water was the result of Quinn's influence, as she was known to follow several Facebook pages concerning fetishization of overweight women. This was confirmed when Jessica Quinn replied to Chris's post, looking forward to the results of her efforts. Chris's trollsome gal pal, Kim Wilson, elaborated that phytoestrogens, as contained in soy and prunes, would not increase breast size and would only result in increased amounts of salty poops. Chris countered her comment with links to online articles from which she gathered information regarding breast increase. Kim found it sad that many girls were deceived by such pseudoscience promoted by websites preying on their insecurities to make a quick buck. Christine asked Kim why she couldn't say something supportive or positive instead, to which Kim replied that since Chris had been tricked by trolls many times before, she was hoping that she wouldn't get tricked again by these websites, adding that she was supportive but could not support false hope. She wrote that the best way to increase breast size or penis length was either surgery or change in weight. If Chris were to gain weight, some might go to her breasts, and if she lost weight, she would increase the perceived length of her penis. On September 23rd, in response to a tweet, Christine posted a newer photo of her cat, Sorbet, clearly showcasing the damage to his eyes. She later clarified that the photo had been taken a couple of months ago and that his one cloudy eye had recovered considerably. On that same day, Chris wrote a long Facebook post featuring her review of the Christian documentary on YouTube made by Sachmo. I was afraid of watching the Christian documentary as I had thought it would hurt me with a lot of the recounting of the events I was trolled and bullied for the most part. But on the other hand, there could have been some commentary from various people talking about how they were inspired by me or something, I don't know. I felt it would be way too much for me to endure watching it, so I covered my eyes with my turby twist. I had my earbuds plugged into my iPod. I listened to the whole thing. I cried at some of the pre-2004 topics as they were not offensive. They reminded me of times when I was so young that I was like this or that. My tears welled into the turby. For about everything before 2004, it was positive, it was kind. And then, starting with the early days of my sweetheart search and Megan and Snyder, Mary Lee Walsh, I had a bunch of oh my god moments in response, but that was cake. And then. I heard the old song I sang that makes me cringe now, in tune to I Want It That Way from NSYNC, Virgin With Rage, and then the sagas, with the trolls and the theoretical exes. All of that was a medium-sized slice of hell to me. So in my overall feeling of that documentary, I gave it a thumbs down on YouTube. I feel like it is about 45% hellish out of the whole hour. I really wish and I feel it would do me a whole better world of good for a documentary or a full compilation of recorded video testimonies from all of the people who were actually touched by my work or by my kindness and efforts in the genuine positive words to outweigh all that 4 years of hate, 07 to 11. I want that video made. You all wanted me to watch this documentary. I had emotional difficulties listening to it. It is done. There will not be any reaction video of me watching this documentary, EVER! Soon after, she wrote an update, 
regarding her want for an updated documentary featuring testimonies from the many people, for example those she met at BronyCon, who she had touched positively. Chris also felt that trimming down the trolling sagas to summaries and showing off more of her kindness and personality would benefit the documentary. She addressed her past homophobic remarks, clarifying that the trollsome imagery on her Wikipedia website badly triggered her, but she became tolerant of gay men by then, as long as behind closed door content was not pushed onto her. On September 26th, Christine posted screenshots of tweets that she had liked from creators No Whacking and Doopy Do Over, both of whom had her blocked, which would have prevented her from seeing their Twitter activity. This meant that she was using another account, bypassing their block. However, Kiwi Farms users noticed that upon checking the activity on her other known account, Nightstar2891, they found that the account's like history did not match the screenshots Chris posted, which meant that she was likely using yet another Twitter account, most probably twice Parlicious, which some followers had previously suspected of being Christine. She gave her name on the site as Kurt Varnson, a name near identical to a pseudonym used by Jerry Seinfeld in the TV show Seinfeld. Possibly after seeing the information posted on the farms, Jessica confronted Chris for secretly following female creators like Doopy and broke off their relationship. Chris changed her relationship status on Facebook to It's Complicated, while Quinn changed hers to Single. Jessica followed up with a short post and replies to comments regarding her irritation at a certain lying, untrustworthy individual without explicitly referring to Chris. Christine then wrote a post, regretting lying to protect from a truth and sneaking to hide from the bullies. Shortly after, she updated her Facebook profile picture to a 7 second long video of herself crying and pleading for Jessica to not leave her. Jessica, I'm so sorry. I don't want to lose you. Jessica accused her of lying because she thought she could get away with it, saying not to blame her actions on the bullies and attached a photo of herself scowling. Soon after, Christine wrote that her head was feeling constricted and that she would be taking some time off away from her phone. Presumably after a private conversation, the two changed their relationship status back to being in a complicated relationship with each other. Shortly after, Chris wrote on Twitter that she was to regrettably quit following the LazyCast podcast featuring Doopy Doo Over, apologizing to them for unsubscribing. Jessica replied, thanking Chris for her decision. Christine then unfollowed to Doopy and No Whacking on her twice parlicious Twitter account. She elaborated on Facebook that cutting off these ties felt like she was conceding defeat against her will, but did so to fulfill her promise. A Facebook friend expressed concern over her willingness to cut the aforementioned ties if she was being forced into it, while Quinn showed surprise at Chris claiming that her actions were being done against her will. Two days later, Christine posted new unfinished pages of Sonic Chu, which revealed possible influence from Jessica Quinn in the fact that Rose Chu had begun to excessively eat and became overweight. Later on, Twitter user Yvonne Mora accused Chris of stealing a work of fan art by Gabriel Montero to use for the banner of her Patreon page. Chris defended herself, writing that it was a lovely piece of art and was using it in full appreciation of the artist who drew it. It was also not considered stealing because Sonichu, Rose Chu, and the city of Quickville were her creations. On October 3rd, Chris launched a new store on the merchandise creation site Redbubble, selling items branded with photographs of Chris before her transition, which included skirts or framed photographs, priced at up to $80. The next day, Christine recorded a second interview for the podcast Internet Dream Lounge with the hosts Meriwether and Easy K, promising to ask more tough questions and plan out the interview accordingly to make it more entertaining than their previous effort, which had to be scrapped. I'm good, You're doing quite fine. We already did this interview already. I uh, just want to re-record it because the last one was quite boring. Uh, and also a few times I slipped up and didn't call you by your proper pronoun. So what was it you told me to do this time uh, in care, like in order to make sure I don't slip up and call you he instead of she? Pretend you're talking with Natalie Portman. Hello, I'm Miss Natalie Portman. Let's have fun today, <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right. Is Natalie well, Portman in the room right now? Uh, apparently she is. Is Natalie Portman well, here? Uh, anyway, um, 
They briefly discuss the villains of the Sonichu universe and the politics of Quickville before moving on to the babysitter who allegedly kickstarted Chris's descent into autism. Early back in your timeline, like the farthest back you can remember, there was an event which shaped you as a person. It was when your childhood uh, babysitter, who I believe she's called Miss Roach, and she locked you in your room because you were interrupting her phone call. Now, I asked you this question in a private chat between you and I, but I would like to ask you again so you can elaborate on it in uh, our interview. Would you ever consider putting Miss uh, Roach into your comic as a villain? Very unlikely, because I have very little information or recollection about her past or current appearance, much less her first name. So that would be a big no. Okay, very well. Uh, because a lot, uh, like that's kind of like the the ground zero of everything Christian, <clears throat> of everything Christery, as as it's called. Do you know that term, Christery? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> all right, that's good. You like that one? Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, wonderful. Uh, Chris, let's play a game of fuck, marry, kill. All right, uh, you, you, I, it's kind of a party game, so I, I guess you haven't really had a chance to play it. It's not something you do in high school. Um, I will mention three people, and here's the rules. You have to fuck one, you have to marry one, and you have to kill one. Okay. So, okay, so let's start out with Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Donald J. Trump. Well, there's an, that's an obvious one. I'd, uh, I'd have sex with Hillary Clinton. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, let me swap that. I'd marry Hillary Clinton. And, okay, I'll... F I'll play with Barack Obama, and I would kill Donald Trump. Okay. Yeah, you don't like Trump very much, do you? Yes, I do not. I had watched the political debates before the election, all three of them, and I could saw, see from a mile away that he was an obvious narcissist. Or the, so the psycholog psychologists have coined this phrase, he is a malignant narcissist. And his actions <laughs> since he came into office have definitely reflected all that. I see. All right. Well, let's not get too into politics. Uh, do we have anything else? All right. Um, just a brief moment. Chris, what's your biggest regret? Hmm. Biggest regret. Yeah, albeit seemingly minor, I'd have to say my biggest regret was when one of my theoretical exes told me that she was fascinated with cake farts and I paid $11 for this beautiful chocolate cake from Walmart that I had actually cut and eat a piece out of beforehand and well I sat bare ass on the cake and uh, after that it was made not it was made not edible and then I ended up having to trash her that remaining cake that I sat on Jesus uh, I mean, well, that, that's. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, that seems sorry about the cake, though. man. Other, other than that, I uh, just want to ask uh, Chris. Uh, you are obviously more and more aware these days that you do have a sort of uh, ironic kind of infamy around you and your comic. Um, why do you think people kind of are so fascinated by specifically you? Um, I'm not really sure, but I'd like to think among which I actually was a victim of a whole bunch of internet trolls and cyber boys, the real actual bad people, and that I stood against them the best as I was able to. And while I was down and out for a while, I definitely made a rebound and came back around. They continued to discuss topics largely covered during their first attempt, such as her history with trolls, comic developments, and prospect of jobs. <laughs> Natalie Portman or Christine Weston Chandler, thank you very much for joining in. Do you want to do uh, a little bit of uh, exit? Uh, our, our podcast name is Internet Dream Lounge. Do you want to give us an exit? Yes, this has been the Internet Dream Lounge. And you have been listening to Miss Christine Weston Chandler. <laughs> and easy going. Y'all have a great and safe day. Stay safe. Well, love, 
freedom uh, and peace. Christine, uh, you just doxed me. <laughs> I Also on October 4th, Christine created a new account on the site Kiwi Farms using the username Legendary Christorian and announced via a lengthy post that she came to gather respectful questions directed at her from forum members and planned to answer them in video form. She aimed to come back once per week to take on any new questions and allowed her responses to be shared in the possible development of a better video documentary or series of her characters. Later that day, she live-streamed her responses to 40 questions on YouTube. First off, yes, that was me on the aforementioned Kiwi Farms. I made the one post. I shall never make another post again on that web forum. But I felt need to establish that I am to face the trolls, good and bad. Because we're all still individual people. And very importantly, I do this because this is like eventually happening, been waiting to happen. I face my demons of the past that have been lingering on to me for so many years. I have not been able to since I was naive, either in regular, even with regular or superpowers. I have to, I still need to address these concerns individually. And then we can move forward and thus allowing me to ultimately find true peace of mind and solace between me and my sweetheart. And of which she has definitely voiced concerns against me doing this. But this is something that just was going to eventually be done anyway. So, to you, my sweetie, I just. Yeah. While your comments between our back and forth earlier today, they did sting me quite a bit. But. I do this for us, my love. Believe you me, my heart, my soul is in the right place. Okay, so without further ado, we'll answer some questions. But firstly, uh, two questions that were proposed to me off of Twitter. One of which, if there was anything you could change in your future message that you had made on your 25th birthday, what would it be? Initially, I would definitely remove the stay straight and swap that with find yourself for who you are. Rather you be straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, whatever. You are you. You are an individual. You should love, accept, and appreciate yourself. Well, I'll answer this one. It's just, it's over my head, over my knowledge. But have you ever thought about applying for Section 8 housing? Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'll take that under consideration. But at the moment, at this present time, I am not looking to move out just yet. Eventually, I may, but that is still... Years later, I can't say for certain right now. Thought about making medallions again. That is in the process. As we, uh, it's, as uh, me and my associates, where it's we're working on expanding our businesses, the business and whatnot. We just opened the uh, round bubble, red bubble store just yesterday. We'll eventually find somebody who can make the medallions in, in, on my behalf and those will be well to go. Okay, yes, this is a very valid question. Do I believe that Quickville, Equestria, and other such places exist in dim different dimensions? Yes! Yes! I believe 
very much in the different dimensions. And I have access. If I access to some, to all those dimensions, and I can fuse it into them just like my OC, Night Star, can see it to our dimension, our reality. Watching our YouTube videos! And visiting us! Visiting our dimensions! Doctor Who does it all the time, too! He's the doctor! Who's the doctor? Yes, he's the doctor! Doctor Who? Yes, he's the doctor! I'm the duck! Who's the duck? Yes, he's the doctor! Jumping gigawatts! Hmm, moving on. Um, although, possibility of children after my full transformation into being a full woman. I have heard it's successful. I can eventually bear my own child, but I'll just leave that up to future events when that can actually happen. As of at this moment, that's still debatable. And I'm not going to fret too much over that right now. That's all the questions. Uh, so now, with this fate, with this task, I've taken a first step towards facing my demons of my past. And once again, I empathize. I want to reiterate: do not contact any of my friends, any of my family, or any of my associates. And including and especially my sweetheart, then I will not answer any more questions. Okay, well, aside from that, I think I'm good for this time. So, until next video I record or the next question I answer, everybody, y'all have a great, safe day. Thank you for your kindness and your respect and listening. On October 5th, Chris posted on Facebook in disbelief after finding out that Jessica Quinn's Facebook profile had been deactivated. In a hasty effort to make contact with her, Chris made a short YouTube video. Sweetie, love. I just noticed your Facebook account is being deactivated. What the hell is going on? I'm worried. What the hell? If there's something going on, I need you to tell me right away, please. You can reach me at my phone number. Touch me. What's going on, sweetie? What the hell? Jessica soon messaged her, telling her that the trolls hacked her true Facebook account because Chris had interacted with them on the farms in spite of her warnings. She called for an end to their relationship because her involvement with the trolls and cyberbullies would badly affect her personal and professional reputation. Christine then posted a screenshot of their last conversation on Facebook saying goodbye to Jessica and telling either Jessica or the trolls that they would have the rest of their life to think about it. She then wrote that she had been backstabbed by people she had decided to forgive, referring to the trolls. In the replies, Chris's trolls from gal pal Kim Wilson wrote that she was sorry that Jessica had stabbed Christine in the back. Chris clarified that it was the trolls that stabbed her in the back by hacking into Quinn's account. Kim asked how did they do that? To which Chris replied by calling her an unsupportive friend, as well as a drunk, high aqua teen addict with her sweetheart. Chris further added that Kim was high, shitted up, and stuck up her ass in comments and replies. Kim Wilson did not understand why Chris was so angry with her, with Chris later telling the trolls that Kim could tell them who was the magical man who appeared in a YouTube video with Chris in 2010, because Chris could not remember his name. Not long after, Christine posted another video on YouTube. I'm very upset right now. I 
Open my sofa. Do you? Kristen posted a photo of her mother, Barbara, coming to console her with a tissue on Facebook, accompanied by Barbara's personalized message to Jessica. Things can be fixed, but broken hearts suffer. Please give Christine another chance. Christine then changed her Facebook profile picture to the video of her crying for Quinn. She later returned to Kiwi Farms to write one final post. Thanks a lot, you goddamn bunch of bastardous children! Her life is ruined. And it was my fault for trying to make peace with you lot! I really wish I never created this new account and tried to reach out. Good fucking bye! On October 6th, she wrote on Facebook angrily that she was the infamous centerfold that every stalker followed, who nobody wanted to be around because of her bloody fans, sharing the music video for the song Centerfold by artist Jay Giles Band. She soon after added that she was experiencing celebrity infamy discrimination. This was soon followed by an apparent attempt by Jessica Quinn to apologize and reconnect. It was soon uncovered that this was not the same account which had been deactivated and likely the attempt of a troll. Quinn herself returned to leave a comment for Chris, apologizing for the madness and confirmed that the previous message was a troll attempt. She confessed that she was still open to Chris as a friend and would leave her Facebook account open only for Chris to message her if she wanted, with all of her post and comment history deleted. Doopy Dooover then returned to the Kiwi Farms to leave a few comments on the thread regarding the fake Jessica interaction after becoming upset by the relationship situation. Chris also returned to the farms to read through the thread and leave likes and ratings on Doopy's posts. Afterwards, Chris resumed watching Doopy Doo Over on YouTube and also the LazyCast podcast which featured her. Christine then lashed out both on Twitter and Facebook, lamenting that she did not have Jessica to feed her and have her watch her belly grow like her Sonichu characters. She shared a photo of a large ice cream candy cup she was having, feeling discorded because she was not sharing it with Jessica. This was soon followed by another photo, this time focusing on Chris's large belly writing that all of it could have been Jessica's. Her next photo was presumably her reaction after receiving a brain freeze from eating ice cream, placing her headache on Jessica's conscience. The next day, Chris went to see the new My Little Pony prequel movie at the cinema, along with some of her friends from the Pokemon League club, which she would attend at the End Games card game shop. She wrote on Twitter that while she was waiting to meet up with her friends, she reflected that her girlfriend was unsurprisingly absent from the movie event because she broke up with Christine due to her fanbase. Later that day, she confessed that she felt she was famous like a princess and had the difficult obligation to keep as many people and loved close ones as possible happy. 
This was soon followed by an announcement that she was recovering and was not going to kill herself as life and her work resumed. She then went to Twitter to reveal that the zip code of Quickville, Virginia was 16429. Not long after, Chris updated her followers with a new page from Sonichu, showing Sonichu's dramatic weight loss to return back to normal. On October 8th, she reminisced on Facebook that she missed the original Sonichu medallion, which was destroyed by a group of trolls pretending to be her first theoretical ex-girlfriend, Blanca Weiss, in 2008. She announced, for the sake of Christery, that their prank was not only not funny, but disastrous, as its destruction caused four years of memories, soulful energy, and perhaps even real magic to disappear. She wished for a moment of silence for her first medallion, and hoped to continue wearing her current third iteration forevermore. On October 9th, Christine made a new video, focusing on updates to her Patreon page. Hello there, citizens of Quickville and the internet! Y'all know me? I'm Christine Weston Chandler, formerly Christian, Christopher. And I'm the true and honest creator of Sanchu, the electric hedgehog Pokemon, for 15 years. And I've been drawing my books and for better or for worse. It has affected thousands of readers over the years. This is an updated introduction to my Patreon, because not only do I need money to help, pay the household bills, but to expand on the merchandising, including finding somebody to make the custom Sancho and Rose Chew figures of the whole set. Anybody interested in uh, applying to uh, become, a become a custom crafter of the Amiibo figures and medallions, they may submit their applications to my associate. Well, I'll put that communication email address in below this video upon uploading. She goes through the available donation tiers, ranging from $10 to $500, and explains their varying rewards. So anyway, I thank everyone for their continued support over the years, and to all Christorians, and all their support and everything. Again, I am Miss Christine Weston Chandler, female pronouns. Thank you very much and have a great and awesome safe day. It was around that time that members of the Kiwi Farms noticed a curious occurrence in the latest episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, titled Once Upon a Zeppelin. In it, a background pony character is spotted a few times, wearing large glasses, a striped greenish polo shirt, and had a faded green mane. In one moment, he was the only character in the shot frowning and not showing happiness for another pony winning a contest. There was also an older pony couple, who some form members suggested to be representative of Chris's parents, Bob and Barbara. In addition, these three were the only ponies in the shot to be wearing clothing. Christine later acknowledged the speculation and doubted that the aforementioned pony was based on her previous likeness. She added that she would prefer to appear on the show as the voice of her original character, Nightstar, and believed that the possible parody of Chris Chan could only be confirmed or denied by a direct statement from voice actress Tara Strong or someone else involved in the production of the cartoon. On October 9th, Chris left a comment on her past friend Megan Schroeder's business's Facebook page, featuring her handcrafted felt anthropomorphic animals. Christine complimented Megan's talents and sent her and her family many blessings. On the 10th, Chris wrote a lengthy post after watching a YouTube video from My Little Pony commentator Dr. Wolf, which focused on fanfiction. She remembered how appalled and disgruntled she felt after discovering the Aspergue comic series created by the troll Alec Benson Leary due to the lack of love and respect for the Sonichu characters and story which had inspired it. However, she had grown up mentally and emotionally since that time, and acknowledged previously detested fan works as stepping stones for fan artists who would continue to refine their craft and create bigger and better stories in the future. The next day, she reviewed the fan comic Sonichu Finale by Harry Darths. While Chris applauded the artist's drawing style and plotline, she greatly disapproved of the banning and killing of LGBTQ characters. Later that day, 
She requested that she wanted the artists of the various fan works of Sonic Chu to print physical copies of the comics and then send them to her, including Alec Benson Leary, to whom Chris apologized for reacting the way she did in response to his Asper Chu comics. On October 12th, Christine commended the fan comic Rose Chu's story by notable Kiwi Farms user Tricky, sharing a page from the comic. At a later point, she recreated the depicted scene from the comic in the form of a series of photos featuring Lego Pokemon and her customized Sonichu Amiibo figurines. Also on October 12th, Chris wrote that she was feeling melancholy and was missing a certain her, likely referring to Jessica Quinn. The next day, Chris expressed her emotional jealousy at the YouTuber PewDiePie, who had met his sweetheart over Facebook and eventually met her in person after messaging for a long time. Unlike Chris's sweetheart Jessica, PewDiePie's partner was not intimidated by his fanbase. Later again, Christine frustratingly tweeted that she missed her sweetheart, who was scared off by the bullying trolls online. She added that the pony characters she created to represent herself and Quinn, Nightstar and Diamond Melody, respectively, were allegedly still together as a couple. On October 15th, Chris confessed once again on Facebook that she missed Jessica and called her trolls uncouth cads because they scared Quinn off by either hacking into or reporting her Facebook account. Over Twitter, Christine defended Jessica's legitimacy and demanded trolls to stop pretending to be her in private conversations or badmouthing her. The next day, Chris came upon the realization that if Jessica had truly been a troll, then their private conversations would have been leaked. Though heartbroken by her breakup with Jessica Quinn, Christine sought comfort in the possibility, however unlikely, that the nature of their relationship was genuine. This created a feeling of success, a belief that Chris did, in fact, have and lost a true sweetheart, giving her the strength to start again and keep moving forward, producing more merchandise and exploring new stories, new characters, and new ideas.